Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am Yumesh Gupta. In today's video, we are going to solve a front-end interview question that is asked in the interview process of Paytm, Uber and other companies. A lot of users have reported this to us and over the internet, you can, if you search, you'll find this uh, information. Uh, in this question, you know, there are multiple ways to solve it. We'll take a look at uh, what could be one of the most simplest ways to solve it. Also, uh, before starting, I would request you to please do like, share and subscribe uh, to help us raise awareness. And also if on the platform, if you go to the questions, you will see this banner. If you want to support the platform, you can click on this link and it will take you to the process of supporting us. And if you want to book a session with me, maybe want to talk about something, practice any questions, system design or journal, you know, uh, want to discuss your journey, my journey or anything, you, I have also introduced mock sessions. You can go click on this link and book a mock session with me. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So in this uh, question, we have to build a custom map function with a limit on number of operations. You can go through the question link and read about the description here. Let me quickly give you a rundown what we need to do. So let me zoom out and let me zoom out a bit, increase the font size here to maybe 30 here. Uh, let's close this for now and make a, bit a, lit a little bit more room here. So this says that we need to implement this method called map limit that takes four arguments, uh, inputs, limit, iterative function and callback. Now input is an array, it could be an array of strings, array of numbers, array of objects or anything. We are not concerned what the actual values are, it, just, it needs to be an array. Second argument is limit, it, it is basically the amount or the you know amount of concurrent or parallel calls we can make any, any point of time. So if this is our array, uh, we can make the call for the first and second element parallelly but since the limit is given as 2, if it, it would have been 3, then we can process 1, 2, 3 at, at any given time. So it's the limit. Third is the iterative function, basically the method that we need to call on every iteration. So we'll call get uh, user by ID on every iteration and we'll pass the array elements to it as a input. And the last argument is the callback. This is the callback that needs to be invoked when the entire array is processed and whatever output we gather from the input array, we pass it to the final resulting callback as call results. It will get the output in all results. So this is what we need to implement in this question. We'll have this uh, mock get user ID. It is basically simulating an async request. So let's start the implementation uh, from what we understand that we have this array right now and max we can make two calls and when all the elements are processed then invoke the callback this is what we need to do okay and at any given point since we can make two calls so if our original array is this and the indexes are 0 comma 1 comma 3 comma 4 we can at any given point of time uh, process 2 so maybe 0 comma 1 initially so let's do that so if we need some sort of tracker, so let's say let index equal to 0. If our index is less than limit, then we will call the iterative function and we'll pass our values here. Now if we see our uh, mock function, it takes the input value element of the array and some callback that is invoked with the output. So let's create that. So post completion callback that is going to take the output and we'll do some processing here. So let's pass this here. Uh, let's make it a function. And once it is done, then we will increase our array by one. Okay. So now what here right now is happening is that we will initially our index would be 0 our inputs dot uh, index or in this case 0 would be 1 so we are going to call the function with 1 and we'll pass the callback second time the index would become 1 we will pass the index as 1 
which would give us the array element as 2 and will pass the callback. Then our index will become 2 and our limit is also uh, 2. So 2 less than 2 is false. So this will break our array, uh, sorry, break our loop and we will not process further break loop. Now this will contain uh, our output. This, this will be called whenever each iteration is over. When this fn uh, completes, then it will call post completion callback and it will pass the output here. Now we need to know at which index we need to store that value. We can do something like let's say if we create a variable called responses and we'll create it here. We can do something like responses dot push output. We can do something like this to store but however the issue with this approach would be that what if our uh, you know callbacks fn's are executing or are completed out of order maybe uh, index 1 completes first then 0. So this will be inserted first and this will be inserted later. So what we can do here is that we can pass the index here. We can pass the current index here. We can bind and pass the index here. So this will become our first argument active index and rather than pushing it we will explicitly set it to that index. So no, no matter whichever the index is which no matter uh, uh, what is the current index the, the for this particular uh, iteration it will get the active index that means for the first iteration active index would always be 0. For the second iteration the active index would always be 1 and so on. Now we know that when we have processed the entire array we need to call the final callback. So how can we track it? We can track something there could be multiple conditions like responses dot length equal to equal to inputs dot length because when we have all the data then we can uh, you know process the callback or we can have another counter let's say completed tasks which would be 0 for now and whenever a post completion callback is executed we will increase it. So when 0th index uh, is done this fn call is executed it will call the post completion callback and it will increase the counter by 1. So what we can do here is that if completed task is equal to equal to input dot length that means we have processed all the inputs we will call our callback and pass the responses here and then we'll simply return it. So this is over. Now our zeroth index is done, our first index is done. Now when uh, let's say for zeroth index it's uh, when the call is done we need to call the next possible uh, value that means it could be 2, it could be 3 and so on. So what we'll do here is that we'll say if index is less than inputs.length that means we have more inputs to process because we have only processed the first array, array element and the second array element. Uh, so and since when this is done it will call the post completion callback that means we have one slot open. Uh, if you build a mental model here you have two slots when one and we have called both the slots at the same time. So now when one slot is over or completed it will call the post completion callback. It is basically telling that store my output and since my slot is open and if there are more elements to process then call the next element. So what we are going to do here is we'll again call the iterative function. We'll pass inputs dot index and again the post completion callback will bind it and we'll pass the index that we are processing right now so that our active index is always having the right value and once it is done we will increase it by 1. Now if I format this this could be a const if we like but let's see so if I run this and see if our test cases are passing see our both our uh, test cases are passing here we have user 1, user 2, user 3, 4, 5 and we are maintaining the order also. So if I you know summarize what we have done initially we had an array we can we have we can make two calls at any given point of time that means we have two slots. Uh, initially we make two calls we fulfill uh, both our slots by array index 0 that means element 1 and 2. Now we have 
used a approach where whenever a slot is completed whenever uh, its processing is done it will tell us using this post completion method that hey my processing is done please store my output for this particular index completed task so i am done so increase the counter of completed task by one if the completed tasks are done and equal to the number of inputs we had then let's end it and let's call our final callback if not since this slot is open and our current index is less than the inputs dot length that means let's say our current index is 2 but our array length is 5 that means we have 3 more elements to process so process it then increase the counter so that on the next completion callback we can process the next index and once it is done this will take care of everything so this is you know uh, can be a tricky question where if you are not maintaining the order correctly it is asked for SD1 to SD2 level as a filtering mechanism uh, so uh, try it out and do share your solution in the comments so this is the end of the video I hope you were able to learn something new today and if you like my solution then please do like share and subscribe if you feel that I missed out on something or something could have been done better then please do mention in the comments do share your solutions with me there are a couple of links on the screen uh, topme.io slash Yomesh Gupta if you want to book a session with me practice questions and devtool.tech slash practice uh, using which you can solve uh, any questions on our platform there are my social links if you want to connect with uh, on Twitter or LinkedIn so till next time see you take care bye bye